Is it ironic that the only reason green-haired girl was mad at Shimmer for not remembering her was because she had erased anything that would make Shimmer remember her? Or is that the incorrect use of the word irony? It's still funny regardless. I can't be the only person who got a good chuckle over green-haired girl only being an outcast because of her lack of self-control and her pedantry over what people remembered about her. It's also funny in a small way that I have absolutely no sympathy for her. And I say that's funny because, well, just like Twilight, I'm sure most of us have had embarrassing or awkward moments that we wish we could just forget. And then I realise something. When you're in those situations where you wish you could take something back, it's not enough that you wish no one else remembers you said those things, but you also wish that you don't remember saying those things. If, in that situation, you're embarrassed for yourself, then, well, you would still be embarrassed for yourself, regardless of whether or not everyone else remembers what happened. And then, as I thought about it more, I realised that, well, maybe that once was the point. And with all that in mind, I thought that maybe in an early draft of the script, green-haired girl was supposed to forget that she'd erased everyone's memories of herself. As in, when she used the memory stone to erase people's memories of awkward encounters and literally any public speaking, she also used it on herself to forego the embarrassment of those situations. And then at the end, when they destroyed the stone, she would have all those memories returned, and then she would start expositing that she removed everyone's memories of herself after she found the stone. Which would also explain why when Shimmer looked through her memories, there were only the ones of her in the background alone, and nothing about those awkward little encounters that she ended up erasing. It feels like at some point during the writing they added the three-day time limit for a bit of tension, not that any extra tension was really needed, when it was already pretty tense that the antagonist could just erase everyone's memories at will. But with some kind of three-day limit in place, I wouldn't be surprised if Confalone and co. realised that any memories of her own that green-haired girl erased would have been lost to that three-day limit. So, as good an idea it could have been to have her remove her own memories, it looks like it was scrapped. And in the scene where Twilight discovers the three-day limit could have quite easily been tacked on, especially since Twilight only happens to notice it on a second read of the original parchment, which would imply that both her and Shimmer managed to miss out on that very important detail when they were both reading the scroll. That scene as a whole just doesn't really feel like it sits with the rest of the story. And it's also worth noting that after they leave the copy room, they never make mention of the three-day limit again. So it's as if the concept could exist entirely self-contained within those five minutes worth of the episode. So, if I'm right and this scene was altered partway through the creation process, then something so seemingly small drastically changes how we, the audience, perceive this green-haired monster. If we did without the three-day limit and she had also erased the memories of herself erasing those memories, then you'd feel sorry for her. She would have been harmed by the stone just as much as everyone else she used it on she would kind of be the victim too. But we actually got the much funnier version of the story in which she was fully aware that she was recklessly erasing everyone else's memories of herself and still complained that no one remembered her. She caused her own grief. She wasn't possessed or corrupted. It wasn't some magical artifact or spell. It was her. She was in full control and fully aware of the consequences, but kept doing it anyway. The major differences between these two ideas is that one makes you sympathetic and the other makes her a laughably bad villain with terrible motivations for her actions. Although, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is bad writing and don't confuse my enthusiasm with saying I don't like it, because if we were to describe green-haired girl, I'm sure most of us would agree that she's irrational, socially awkward, selfish, and maybe even somewhat impulsive. And with those character traits in mind, the idea of her erasing memories with very little concern for how others would remember her does sound like something she would do. Her acting as a bad villain with poor motivation would be in line with those character traits. She's a lot like Glimmer, 
I take your mind back to the season five finale, when we found out Glimmer's motivations for starting our town and taking cutie marks all stemmed from her childhood friend leaving her. And a lot of people were not satisfied. Not me, though. I loved it. I thought it was different and interesting. Because in that moment, the show presented Glimmer as irrational, socially awkward and selfish. Glimmer was a villain with flaws, but not flaws like plot holes or inconsistencies. Instead, she had flaws in her character. Chrysalis in A Canterlot Wedding standing back and doing nothing to stop Cadence and Shining Armor using the big love shield spell. That's just bad writing. Glimmer acting irrational because her friend left her might be misguided motivation to rid the world of cutie marks, but that doesn't mean it's bad writing if it's believable for her character to act that way. Even Twilight, in both Cutie Remark and Forgotten Friendship, makes judgement about the irrational behaviour of these episodes' respective antagonists. Point being, Sometimes people are a little too obsessed with characters being perfect. Characters who have complete and absolute conviction in their flawless motivation. But that isn't always the case in real life. And sometimes villains and heroes alike, with some flaws in their motivations, make for an interesting story. The show wouldn't even be what it is if the main characters didn't have flaws, so... Why not the same for the villains? Plus, I did just prove that if you think that Wallflower had perfectly reasonable motivations for her damaging actions, then you must also agree that so did Glimmer. Go on then. Try and prove me wrong. Blimey, it's been almost three years since I last made a video. That's that's not good. Yeah, um, okay. I just want to give a quick shout out to the people who support Equestria Now on Patreon. That's Loneless, Sweet Gale, Austrian Brony, and Jetwave. They all give us money, and I appreciate that because it's always nice to know that people, they care about the content that much that they want to give some of their hard-earned cash if you want to support us on patreon then by all means there'll be a link in the description if you haven't already as well uh, i would really appreciate it if you could go read my webcomic that i'm working on with a friend of mine uh, it's about these ragdoll horses who fight evil dream monsters and protect humans in the night i really like it but then i wrote it so uh, of course i do but uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could have a read and uh, just let us know what you think, because it's all a bit new to us. So, yeah. And with that, see you around.